Hey, how's it going everyone? Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to send an email from Power Apps. If you enjoy SharePoint Teams, Power BI, Power Apps, and Power Automate tutorials, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out more videos in those areas. Now for my intro. All right, so I had a pretty cool idea when I was just thinking in my kitchen of uh, sending an email in Power Apps using a Power Automate flow. So basically I need to gather what the email needs. And to do that, let's go ahead and create a new instant cloud flow. Sending an email. Power apps. And this will be a power apps trigger. And we just want to see what the uh, send an email needs. Because I'm going to request this from power apps. So send an email v2. So I need a email address, a subject and a body to basically just send this email. So we need to create a little template in my power app to gather this information, send it from power apps, power automate, and then uh, the flow will send out the email. So I just want to create this because I think it'd be a pretty cool, cool little project and uh, get you a little familiar about integrating a flow to power apps and gathering data. So in my power apps, I have a little I just have a rectangle and a header on top. It's basically just spreading the rectangle across the screen and the label the same length. So now let's go ahead and gather some of this information. So for the two, we need to gather some email addresses and there's two ways you can probably do this is just having an info box and then having a combo box where you can select the user from people field. So we'll go ahead and try and do both of those. So for my labels, I'm just going to have, um, I'll probably have them like right here. I'm not going to worry too much about the, the X and Y values in this one. So I'll probably just manually hand do it. So for this one, we want the um, sender, what was it? Two. So we'll just do two here. Even though it's pretty small um, lettering and I kind of want it to be bigger. So we'll set these to like 20. Two. Okay, and then we want a, we'll do an input box right now. So text input, and then um, we will have this X after the label. Actually, we'll do like 700, and we'll make the height the same as the label. So label two, got height. And we need definitely need some borders around these so our users know that it is a input box. So this one is good to go. We'll just have it extend all the way to the end of the screen. And let's put a little border on this one so the users know. Two. We'll have it like that, even though I don't know. It doesn't look the best, but we can fix the UI later. So label two. Text input, we'll do input, email. All right, now we need a heading. Let's actually stretch that to that and then um, we'll make this a little bit bigger. That looks a little bit better. All right, so next let's just copy this, paste it, put it right underneath. And now we need a, a subject. So subject, we have a subject. And again, this is gonna be a label. This is going to be a input box. So a user will go in and input some information that we want to send to the users. I'm just going to turn the, uh, the border radius to zero. So the borders are straight lines because that was bothering me for a second. Let's actually turn off this border, see if it looks a little better. Uh, yeah, that looks fine. And then uh, for the, I think it's, in text, default maybe? Yeah, default. We'll change the default and all things. I don't want anything to show there. Okay, and then we need a body. So whatever I want in the body of the email, go ahead and give these some label names. So label subject, input, subject, I can't spell today. Okay, just copy this, 
place it right underneath, label body, and then um need another input box. This will be input body. Body. Actually, instead of having the default, let's go ahead and do the hint text because it will display like a little hint. And users won't have to delete that text when they go to unearned information in there. This will be unearned body. And we need to change this to body. Body to subject body, unearned body. Change this hint text to unearned subject. And that we will do for the email. Unearned email. Okay, we got our three fields right here. Let's make the body a little bit bigger. Just because it um, be a lot more information for the body. Perfect. And let's have a bun to activate the flow. So that'd be bun. And we just be like send email. The text send email. So you just click on that. And then uh We'll also have one to clear contents. If the user, let's say they didn't want to send the email at all, we can clear out the contents for them. Clear, we'll just have clear. So send email, clear. And give these buttons some names. So button clear, button, send email, go to, you can enter in an email here, Michael, at subjects please submit timesheet and then for the body i want this to be at the top so let's see if i can change that i think it might be display mode multi-line okay that's better we have a body we have a subject and we have a two basically i need to send all this information over in a power app so let's go back to create our flow we have power apps right here I don't need to do anything for this step, but I need to gather that information. So let's go ahead and make some compose statements because I will use these compose uh, actions to store that data. So the first thing I need to store is this email. So input email. I will just go ahead and rename this. I recommend renaming your uh, Power Automate actions for these composes ones. So it's easier to see in Power Apps what that field is actually going to contain. So instead of it just saying compose data, it's going to say email data. So when I click on ask in Power Apps, it's going to say email inputs. If I didn't change that name, it would just say compose inputs. And you just have to remember that the first one you're looking for is an email. So definitely rename those. So the second one we need is the subject. So compose. Uh, rename this to subjects and then again you just want to ask in power apps right here so for the third one we've got the body of the email so another compose and let's go ahead and do ask in power apps again oh see I didn't change the name right here it's compose inputs let's go ahead and rename this to a body. Actually, you see how it says compose inputs, subject inputs, equal inputs. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because I don't want that compose inputs to show. So, because it's annoying. So we have our compose. Go ahead and rename it. Body inputs. Uh, it's still showing down here, but we'll just do ask and power ups. I thought it would remove it, but apparently it doesn't. Okay. So I saved it a little too early. It's going to ask us for the two subject and body. But we can go ahead and remove this for now. Go ahead and remove the send an email. I just had that so I can check and see what I needed. Okay. Let's go ahead and import this Power Automate add flow. I have a ton of flow, so bear with me trying to find it. Send an email Power Apps. All right, now this flow is integrated in our Power App. 
and I can add it to this button down here. So on select, I want to do send, send, sending an email power apps. So that will be my flow because it removes the spaces in your power automate. So sending an email power apps dot run. Is it dot run? Dot run. Okay. So email inputs, subject inputs, compose inputs, body inputs. So it still has that compose there. It's looking for that compose. I think I might need to redo this really quick. Um, I'm not looking for that compose anymore, but it's asking for four input parameters. So email, subject, compose, body, because I made that mistake. So I'm going to go back and redo this flow just so I can get rid of that compose. You might have to do that again. If you have a way around that, or if you have a way to remove it, let me know. So I can't remember how to do that now. And I don't really know if there's a way to do it. So I'm just going to um, redo this flow really quick and uh, get back to you. So we're doing power apps again. And let's just see if those composers are still there. Nope. So asking power apps, asking power apps, and asking power apps again. So you just have to remove the top one. You don't, that was actually quicker than I thought, <laughs> to be honest. So we'll look, email, subject, body, and then uh, we need to refresh this. Let's see if it um, actually changes this. So email, subject, compose. Let's go ahead and remove this from our app and re-add it and um, see if it gives us the updated parameters. So it's back in our app. Let me remove this. Sending an email and power apps dot run email subject body. So now it is working. So we're good to go. Uh, it got rid of that extra parameter we didn't need. All right, so we need to grab the email inputs and this is going to be whatever our label is. So input email, input email dot text. And next we're going to need the subject and that is input subject. Dot text. And last but not least, we need the body. So we'll do input body dot text done that and then um we can send a notify saying email has been sent i'm not going to check if the actual email is going to be sent maybe there's something that failed but the only thing that could fail in this email is if the email is in a correct format so if it's not in a correct format this notify message is still going to say that email has been sent. Usually you want to return something in the uh, Power App. So let me go ahead and do send an email here. So now we can add it in. Go to add dynamic content. So I'm adding the email outputs. Now I'm doing the subject outputs and now I'm doing the body outputs. And this is going to send from whoever sent that, e press the e send an email button. So let's go ahead and do that email. Uh, subject, please submit timesheet. And for the body, let's go ahead and do, please submit your timesheets. Don't forget. So before I press send an email, let's go ahead and add a couple resets to reset these fields back to nothing when I press submit. So if I press submit right now, the uh, send an email button, all these are going to remain the same and I want those to be reset. So reset input uh, email set input subject set input body and i'm going to go ahead and copy that code add it to the on select for clear so now anytime i press clear it's going to reset those three fields 
let's go ahead and click on send an email. So email has been sent. Let's go ahead and check our flow. Uh, did I even save this? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So it looks like our email was sent. Uh, succeeded. So let's go ahead and look at my email. Uh, nothing yet. Let's go back and click on this. Body. Yeah, so it looks like that email action wasn't included, so it didn't send successfully because of that action wasn't there. I resaved it, so let's go ahead and click on run. I'm going to run from a previous one. Actually, let's click on this, resubmit this because now it's going to run with the updated uh, send an email action included. The resubmit, the send an email action was included too. It includes our subject and includes the body. Check our email, uh, Michael to Michael. So it's the same account. And uh, please submit your timesheets. Don't forget. So we sent the email. That's, that's awesome. It cleared all the fields and uh, it accomplished what I wanted to do. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video about how to send an email using Power Apps, uh, integrating a Power Automate flow. If you like the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And I will catch you guys in the next video.